75 currently. mile an hour winds, 20% humidity. I think, um, I think Jennifer is going to talk about the weather a little bit. So we can still pull up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to see. yeah. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Hoka NAZ Elite One Hour Run. I'm Rory Linkletter here with my co host Nick Hogger. We are coming to you live from Phoenix, Arizona, and beautiful Brophy High School, where tonight our teammate Alice Wright will be trying to break the British one hour run record on the track. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. We're going to have some fun here. Yeah, thanks guys for tuning in tonight. We're going to have a blast watching Alice run a lot of laps around Brophy High School's track. We've got a great night on our hands. Uh, what do you think of this weather, this atmosphere that we have here, Rory? Yeah, so obviously Phoenix is a warm place, and tonight is no different, but it is cooling quickly. There's no sunlight, so we have the, the, we're under the lights. It's 75 degrees and calm, about a three-mile-an-hour wind. Can't complain about that. Not humid. It's a dry heat. You can't beat the dry heat, you know? Um, and coming up from, uh, or coming down, I should say, from Flagstaff, where we live and train, um, Alice should be feeling pretty good out here today. Uh, you know, most of the time, you know, Alice and these and these women, uh, Danny Shanahan, Lauren, were out uh, running on the roads of, you know, hilly Lake Mary. So the track should be a nice reprieve, um, some nice flat, great surface here. Uh, we're, we're excited for this. Yeah, and we're, uh, we're excited because this is an, a record attempt. It's not every day that you get to attempt a record. And although the one-hour run may seem like an odd record to many, it is one with a lot of history. And we both have tried to break our one-hour national records, Nick. Uh, talk a little bit about your experience from the event and give our listeners a little bit of a sneak peek of what Alice is getting herself into tonight. Yeah, you know, the... Um the hour record is definitely, you know, you don't, we don't hear about this all the time, right? It was uh, something that, you know, we put together last summer. Um, you know, coming off the, the COVID time, we wanted to mix things up and see what we could do for ourselves on, uh, on the track for an hour. And let me tell you, it's just, it's a little bit of a daunting uh, experience. Um, you know, it's, there's one thing to stare at a road and break it up with hills and, and that sort of thing out on the roads, but there's something about turning left for that long that we're not necessarily used to, you know, maybe uh, gearing up for more of like a 10K effort. Uh, it, it seems to go by a lot quicker, but sure enough, you get to 40, 50 minutes in and you've been turning left for a long time. Um, so it was it was a definitely a tough experience. You know, I think both you and I, Rory, we had, uh, we had some, you know, a tough day out there, right? <laughs> uh, it definitely gets... It gets to a certain mental attrition point, you know, where it's just a battle of, okay, get to the next lap and then keep going to that next lap. That's kind of how I experienced that. And, you know, as soon as you get done, you're like, man, thank God that one's over, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, for sure. And uh, the one hour run did regain some popularity over the last year as both men's and women's world records were broken last year in 2020 and the women's American record. But the British record that we're going for tonight, the women's British record, uh, was set in 2000, uh, April 2nd, 2000, and it is 16,495 meters, which is, for those wondering, 41 laps and some change. And when the race starts, we'll see uh, a cone on the first bend, a big white cone. That will be after 41 laps. When she passes that, that would be the record. Um, and... Alice has never gone further than 25 laps, but those next 16, once she gets past that threshold of, of 25 laps, are going to get harder and harder as they go. And here they are lining up, and we're going to get you uh, affiliated with the pacers and the athletes and what they're going to start doing here shortly. Yeah, about, uh, looks like just a minute to start here. We're getting some 
official uh, official guidance. Um, what's fun about this hour record is there's a lot of eyes on this sort of thing. Um, they're going to be checking every split, taking a picture of every split. There's a lot of record eligibility around this sort of thing. And, and they're off. off. <laughs> All right, so you'll notice on the inside we have Alice Wright in the orange kit, and in front of her is Danny Shanahan on her right in front of her and behind her on her right is Lauren Paquette. Uh, they'll both be staying on her right shoulder. Alice loves to front run and she wants to have a clear sight of the track in front of her. So they're not going to run directly in front of her. They're going to run in a diamond formation tonight. Yeah, I think this offers a great line of sight for Alice. Um, like you said, Rory, she's she's a great front runner. Look, she there were countless 10Ks in the NCAA in her career where she was you know, right at the front of these of these races, uh, dictating the pace and how those races played out. So this just plays to her strengths really well. Um, and having familiar faces with Danny Shanahan and Lauren Paquette by her side, it's it's just going to make things feel a lot easier out there for her. And those wondering what she's going to be looking for for each split around the track, the record is 87.3 seconds per 400 or 551.5 per mile. And... We'll get your first split here coming up shortly as they come on the home stretch. Yeah, so we were speaking with uh, with Ben Rosario about her pacing duties today. Um, and what we're looking at for her is shooting for that 83 to 84 mark. Um, it looks like they were right around 86 seconds or so, just kind of getting affiliated with the, with the pacing there. Um, I could be a little bit off on that 87. one. 87.4 is what I'm seeing on the clock, Perfect. which is fine. That's 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 the pace that they need to run. I would I would strongly encourage these athletes, after our experience, to start easy. It's a long race. You can get the rhythm going. You have an hour to get under that pace, and running at pace to start is a good way to do this. We're trying to set a record uh, for the UK, and, and she's on pace for that through 400, and she has to do 40 laps more of that, so she has yep. to pace herself here. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of time to get things uh, get things right, get things settled. Um, you know, and something to note here is Alice is in great fitness. She's just coming off the Valencia Half Marathon where she ran 74. Athens. Oh, <laughs> Athens Half Marathon, sorry. Uh, where she ran 74.51. Uh, she ran ba basically alone on kind of a hilly course. Um, you know, and one thing to note is she's not necessarily tapering for this event either. You know, she had a great workout this week. Uh, some K repeats just to kind of affiliate herself with uh, track running and, and just kind of the mental attrition of, of long repeats uh, out on the track here. So she's in great fitness. She should be feeling pretty darn good as she is rolling around these this early segment here. Yeah, and Alice uh, is gearing up for the Valencia Marathon, which was where that little Freudian slip by Nick Hogger came in. Sure did. He's, he, she's going to Valencia, but she hasn't been there yet. 256, another 127, 128 maybe? Yep. Uh, yeah, so again, we're right on pace, right on schedule. It's early, just two laps down, and she's looking nice and comfortable. And yeah, she, uh, Alice wanted me to reiterate how this is a stepping stone for her marathon training, and this is just a notch in the belt on the way. This is something that she has circled for a while, though, is something she wanted to try to get this British one-hour uh, record, and... We think this is well within her capabilities, and she's been training really well. A couple of the workouts she's done to prepare herself for the track uh, and for this this high volume, which she's trying to run, you know, 10, 10 and a quarter miles on the track, 41 laps, like we said, is doing long intervals on the track. She's done a 3x3 three three mile, a 4x2 mile on the track, and she's been doing those at 7,000 feet well under this pace. So Ben Rosario... Her coach was very, very confident that she was going to be able to do this, and that's why uh, she's probably going to start conservative, but I would imagine she's going to start itching those laps down well under record pace because she's in incredible shape, and I think 551s is very doable. This is someone whose marathon pace will probably be faster than that, and she's only got to do it for one hour on a flat track. Yes, the ball's in her court. Uh, she's, she's ready for a good one here. And, I mean, just to reiterate kind of the athlete that Alice is, um, she is an eight-time All-American from the NCAA. She ran for University of New Mexico, uh, where she was the only NCAA athlete to earn four All-American honors on the track in the 10K, as well as four All-American honors in cross-country. So 
Alice is a very talented athlete. Uh, this is this is well within her wheelhouse. And you know, like I mentioned earlier, Roy, I don't know if you remember back to the NCAA days, but how many of those 10K finals did Alice lead? It, it seemed like every single one, she'd be the one at the front, kind of dictating how this race was playing out early on. Well, as you can see right now, she has two pacers, and she's currently one stepping both of them. This is typical Alice behavior. She's she loves to be have her foot on the gas, and I'm sure she's uh, communicated with Danny and Lauren, her pacers and teammates, her intentions here today. And maybe it was just let's get into the rhythm now. I'll set the pace, and then maybe you guys get back on my shoulder and and show me uh, that pace once I've found it. And I think that's smart because if the pacers are who aren't going a full hour on the track today were too aggressive. Alice knows what she can do more than anybody, so I think it's important that she sets the tone early and then they just help keep the tone going through these first few miles as we approach the one mile split coming up. Remember, 551s would do it, and it looks like we're well under that around 545, 546, so she has picked it up after her first few laps were just under or just at pace. Yeah, it's a great place to start out. I mean, when we're talking with Ben Rosario, you know, uh, kind of the big goal would be that 83 to 84 or that 532 to 536 per 1600 meter range here. Um, that's that's a goal on this day. But like you had said, there's plenty of laps to run to break this record. She's already well under pace. Um, and at this point, you've kind of let the nerves settle. Uh, you're finding your rhythm, um, you know, and that goes for Danny and Lauren as well. Like they're finding the rhythm within this, uh, within this track itself, and just finding that smooth, smooth spot to stay at uh, for the next 55 minutes here. Yeah, and if you're an endurance fan in general, uh, and you don't just focus on running, you would know that the uh, the one hour record is actually a really popular event in other disciplines, specifically the cycling and this is something that is held in high prestige and it i think it's something that we could bring back to running and covid gave us the opportunity to see a couple people a couple world-class athletes uh, olympic gold medalists give it a try like mo farah and safan hassan and the prestige of this event is simple it's it's a it's a task to just see how much you can push yourself for one whole hour with nothing but mind-numbing laps and it's it's really difficult for a number of reasons uh, you're working the exact same muscle groups the entire time you're out here you don't have hills to break up the mental side but also the physical side she's gonna be turning left and running straight exclusively and on a flat surface and if you're not callous to the track it is extremely difficult one thing in retrospect that you and I both noted uh, and coach Ben Rosario after we attempted this one hour run was that we needed more time on the track prior to it because it's exhausting to run this many laps in succession. And Alice did that right this time. She did an eight mile session and a nine mile session on the track. And today she's gonna try to go just over 10 miles. So uh, she's at least trained her body to a threshold that she has never done before. And she's calloused for it. And she's certainly in the fitness to, to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the unspoken thing with this hour record is, you know, fitness aside, it's a, it's a mental battle. You're, you're seeing the same thing over and over again. Um, and thinking about nothing but those lap splits uh, at the end of the day. So it's really about turning the mind off, you know, early on and, you know, using that mental energy for late in the race when things are going to inevitably get really hard. It's, it's important to note here that I'm just looking. She did run an 81 two laps ago and an 82 on her last split, and we're about to get another one here shortly. Last split... Another 82, 82.8. So she's actually running faster than even Ben Rosario scheduled her for here tonight. And maybe it was those first few laps going a little slow, and she's just trying to find that exact rhythm. Uh, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. She's got to be careful. She's got to be patient here. This is a long race mentally, and it's really important, kind of like a marathon that you pace yourself, knowing that the race doesn't really start until you get in those last 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, you, Nick, had a more successful bout with the one-hour run when, when we ran it back last summer in Santa Barbara, and you felt like the 40 to 50 minutes was the most challenging set uh, part of the run, and tell me why that was. Yeah, you know, we had um, we still had a decent group, you know, through that 20, 30-minute mark, uh, or basically just, you know, just after 10K, we still had, uh, you know, a group together, and that helps so much. Um you know, running with people is a lot easier on the mind and the body um, for whatever reason. 
And at a certain point when it was just me uh, kind of char- taking the charge, that 30 to 40 minute mark and then 40 to 50, it just inevitably got so hard. And it's, it's interesting because it's no longer about, okay, how many laps do I have left? It's just this time that is weighing on your mind. You're like, wow, 20 minutes all of a sudden feels so long. And I can't explain why that is, but it just feels hard and long. Yeah, it's 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 a war of attrition, like we've said many times here tonight, and it's it hasn't even begun for them. They're still just in that moment of finding the rhythm. But luckily, she has two pacers here tonight that are very capable, and we'll talk a little bit about Danny and Lauren now. Danny Shanahan, the one on her right shoulder, she is a mem- has been a member of NAZ Elite for just as long as Alice. They were part of the same recruiting class. She's a 416, 1500-meter runner, a 1517, 5000-meter runner, and a 3122, 10,000-meter runner. And she's coming off of a, a pretty incredible year last year where she saw personal bests in the 5 and 10,000, but was uh, unfortunately met with injury similar to Alice in the last year. And so this is kind of a building block for her, a good workout as she gets ready for some fall races. Um, and she's been... She's been feeling pretty good, and this should feel really, really comfortable for all three of these ladies at this point as they approach the two-mile mark here on this home stretch. Yeah, about 75 meters to go in this uh, in this second mile here. We'll get a split for you guys here momentarily. It looks like this second mile is going to be quick. Yep. My hand split has us at about 534 or so. So that is right in that range of that 532 to 536 range that we that Ben Rosario was looking for Alice to run. And it really seems like they, like they have found their rhythm here. Um, and I just think those early nerves, that first mile, uh, you know, cause things to be just a touch slow. You know, just establish where we're at, get the legs moving. And now we're off. We're off and running now. Yeah. Lauren Paquette here is uh, the second pacer, the one in the back of the of the group um odd for a pacer to sit in the back but like we said earlier on the broadcast alice doesn't want people running in front of her she wants to be able to see this this is more for the uh support and the pressure that they apply to her by being there there's not a lot of wind tonight it's as still as could be we we had it at three miles per hour before this event started again 75 degrees fahrenheit it's pretty nice out here i'm sitting out here in a t-shirt and i'm getting cold up in the booth you know what? It's uh, you can't ask for better conditions than this, honestly. Um, you know, inevitably things will heat up a little bit here towards the end, but this is a great starting point for these gals, and it's only going to get cooler from here. So we're excited for that. And just talking about Lauren Paquette here, um, she is a very seasoned runner. She's been with NEZ Elite uh, just about two years now, but she's a 409 1500 meter runner. She's 8:47 in the 3K. 1510 in the 5k and 3153 in the 10k and so what we'll end up seeing here in just a little bit uh we'll point this out later but uh lauren will be running uh around six miles with alice uh for her pacing duties today um so you kind of see her just kind of sitting back there uh waiting for her time to kind of take over and help alice out later into this race that last split was an 84 and it looks like alice is actually pressing right now and danny's falling off the shoulder um, maybe Lauren will move up and take that position for her. Hopefully, it uh, looks like Alice is taking in some fluids here. I didn't know that we were doing fluids, but I, I think it's smart. I mean, it is a, on the, a touch on the warm side with just mm-hmm. like what we're used to here at this time of year in Flagstaff. I mean, we're, we're starting our runs with mittens and, and two layers, and here we are at 75 degrees. It's beautiful if you're sitting in the booth, but when you're running for over an hour, it, it can be on the, a touch on the warm side, and that's where the hydration will come in for her. Yeah, and some things about Alice, uh, you know, we've been teammates with her for a good few years here now, and she is a regular traveler to beautiful Sedona with the Red Rocks. Uh, she's down there, it seems like, every other weekend if she can get her hands on it. So She, she likes is, the warmth. She likes the warmth. Uh, I think these conditions are for her, and really, if she can just dial into that uh, and enjoy this, uh, you know, this beautiful weather reprieve from the Flagstaff altitude and cold, um, I think this is going to spell good things for her this evening. 10 laps in, and that was a 82.8, so sped up again. Again, we could kind of see that as Alice took the lead, and it looks like Danny's now reestablishing herself up in front on that right shoulder of Alice. Again, this is all touch and touch and go because it's just such a foreign concept to go this long, and I think they want to let Alice control things, but they also 
want to help her out as much as they can, which is a, t a fine line to, to go with here. Uh, ben Bruce, our pacer for the team, often paces these ladies, and he'll tell you firsthand that Alice does not like to be ran in front of. She, even when she's got a professional pacer in front of her, she likes to be right on the shoulder, she likes to press, she likes to have that line of sight. We've said that, and that's definitely something that she's going to continue to do here tonight. And she's good at it. She's good at running alone. She's good at pushing it uh, by herself. And that's going to be the skill set that she's going to need in those latter 45 minutes as we hit the 15-minute mark and approach the 11th lap here. Another thing worth noting for Alice Wright, which I find a, a particularly good skill for her, is she is a counter. She likes to count while she's running. And so she she's very numbers based. She's probably counting her steps as we're going per lap. This is a way she quiets her mind and the pain that may, she may be experiencing throughout these things and is just focusing on the task at hand. She's counting her splits, she's focusing on her breath, and she's just taking it one step at a time, literally. Yeah, I mean, you don't hear that every day that, uh, that a runner counts her steps. I mean, we're taking thousands upon thousands of steps when we, uh, when we run, but uh, for whatever reason, that helps Alice just dial it in. And uh, inevitably, she's probably doing that as we speak. So we're coming into the third mile here. Um, I do want to jump into, you know, kind of the history of this UK record. Um, I happened to get a chance to speak with uh, Michaela McCallum, who set this record back in 2000. Um, don't worry, we'll get you a split here soon. But she, Michaela McCallum, was training for the for the marathon at the time uh, to try to get a qualifier for the Olympic Games, uh, for the Sydney Olympic Games, that is. And her coach um, decided that the hour record could be a fun way to get a great, uh, a great stimulus for this, for this training block for her. Brief reprieve here as we give you guys another the third mile split. Third mile split. Another 534. They are locked in, guys. It doesn't get much better than that. Once you see numbers like that, it only, I don't know, Rory, this... When you see numbers like that, it uh, it just helps helps you relax a little bit. Um, well, sh when you know you're doing things right, you're you're locked in. It just yeah. it helps you just feel that much more smooth and like, hey, I'm doing this thing, I'm doing it right. Yeah, she approaches 5K. If Michaela was on the track right now, the f the current UK hour run record holder, she would be almost 150, 200 meters behind Alice currently. She's about. 30 to 35 seconds ahead of schedule right now as she approaches 5k in 1735-ish. That's moving. She's going to be at 35 minutes at 10k and then you know, we'll keep an eye on that and see how she moves throughout these 5k splits, but she's looking to cover you know, two more 5k's at least yes. and some to get this record. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, and I mean just diving into this uh, this old record, uh it was funny enough the only way to set this up back in 2000 was um, Michaela McCallum and an old Italian runner, uh, Margarita Grosso, they both went to the track while a 24 by one hour relay was happening. Uh, and so essentially they just hopped in and paced each other every four laps to kind of, you know, help, uh, help pace each other, take some mental edge off. Um, you know, the mental wear and tear of this, of this race that we've, uh, that we've spoken about. And, it ended up being like a really fun atmosphere because there were so many people lined up camping out for this 24 by one hour relay race. And in, you know, in speaking with Michaela, she had a lot to say um, about this race. You know, she found about 40 minutes in. Uh, funny enough, that's where I found it to be super hard when I was when I was doing this last year. But about that 40 minute mark, she just felt like 20 minutes just felt like an eternity uh, to go. But nonetheless, she knew that she was on UK record pace. And it was just a, a, a mental attrition battle from there. Um, some advice that she gave to Alice for this record, she said, don't think about the end result. Just stay in the moment and stay in each lap that you're in, and the end result will take care of itself. And I think these ladies are doing that quite well right now. Keep counting, keep counting those steps, Alice. That's what we're keep saying. Keep counting those steps. <laughs> yeah, as we're approaching 20 minutes, one-third of the way through the race, this is probably still very, very comfortable for them. 
Uh, that last split was an 84, so right on the money of where we want to be for that 532 to 536 range that Ben Rosario said Alice would be trying to pace these miles. And that is 14 laps down. Yeah. On top of, you know, Alice's decorated All-American career, she just she also happened to be a part of two incredibly talented uh, cross-country teams at her time at New Mexico. Which, uh, by the way, just won their conference meet here this weekend. It's conference weekend in cross-country. So shout-out to her alma mater, UNM. Yes, who, which happened perfect score, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the conference meet, which is no easy feat. <laughs> You know how hard it is to perfect score a meet after BYU perfect scored <laughs> Portland back in 2017, right, Nick? Yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir, I do. So it looks like Alice just took another fluid drop. Um, and pulled away, pulled ahead by a couple strides, but it looks like Danny's going to get up on her shoulder again. Again, they're probably just giving her the space she needs through those bottle stations as Alice tries to stay on top of hydration in these moderately warm conditions. Again, feels good when you're sitting out here, but it's a whole other thing when you're trying to run as hard as you can for a whole hour. Absolutely, and you know, like we've talked about, this is kind of a stepping stone in her in her marathon uh, debut build. Um, it's just great practice to take fluids down and uh, and just callous the stomach and the body for uh, for getting as much fluids in as you can in uh, such a long race. Yeah, so the last two splits have been an 84. We'll see what this one is here. I think Danny Shanahan is scheduled to go four or five miles with her, and Lauren's scheduled to go six, if I'm not mistaken. So yep. this is going to start getting to the point where, like, her company is growing thinner as the laps go, and she's looking very, very good. They're both looking – all three are, of the ladies are looking very relaxed. Again, this is well beneath their, you know, peak performance level for this distance that they're going to run on the track, especially for Danny and Lauren, who are only planning on going a few – four to six miles they've run four to six miles on the track at 10 seconds per lap faster so this is very comfortable running for them and they're just here to be her tour guide on an excellent adventure as she hunts down a uk record beautifully put rory yeah and just talking about you know what lauren and danny are looking to here pretty quick um they will both be running the usatf 5k championships next weekend at the Abbott Dash uh, to the finish line 5K in New York uh, for New York City Marathon Weekend. We're really looking forward to see what they can do on the roads there. Um, and then shortly after, they will be a part of the Pro Ekaden Relay uh, with us in Michigan. As we approach the four-mile mark, or the 16th lap, I guess it's not exactly a mile, but it's, you know, four laps around the track is close enough, so we're rounding down. We have a mile split of? Right around 536. 536, 537, and Danny Shanahan has uh, dropped off. Her pacing duties are over for the night, um, and now Lauren is taking over. She's uh, joining Alice at the right hip, right shoulder there, and uh, just keeping it smooth. They're dialed into this pace already, so uh, just chipping away at what they've already been doing for four la um, about four miles here. If you're stumbling onto this broadcast somehow and you don't know what you're watching, you're watching the Hoka One Hour Run, Hoka NAZ Elite One Hour Run with partnership, timing partnership with Alice Wright, Koros. And Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit about Koros and why they are sponsoring this event for Alice Wright? Yeah, first off, we just want to be uh, give a big shout out to Koros, uh, the official sports performance technology partner for Alice's race tonight. She is wearing the Koros Apex, and they have a, this incredible new feature for specific for track running. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, um, I'm sure you have at this point, but GPS signal does not uh, calculate exactly what you've run for the distance on a track. For whatever reason, GPS just doesn't like the, uh, like the oval, even though it's in open spaces. So they've developed this great algorithm, and it essentially it dials into the the lane that you're running in and it will auto split if you want it to auto split every 400 meters or every mile for that matter um, it'll auto split at the same exact spot on the track every time so I don't know if Alice ha necessarily has that split going every lap but if she did every time that she crossed that start line again at 400 meters in she would hear another beep and it's accurately getting that 400 meters every single time so Big, big thank you to Corals for uh, supporting Alice in this endeavor tonight. 
And if you're a fan of the team and you came here just because you like NAZ Elite, and maybe you don't know that much about Alice Wright and you want to learn a little bit more. Since being on NAZ Elite, Alice has been sixth at the European Championships for 10,000 meters in 2018. She was the number one ranked 10,000 meter runner in the UK in the year of 2018. And she set her PB of 31.56 for 10,000 at the Peyton Jordan Invite in 2019. And this will probably be a different type of hurt than a 10,000 meter on the track. She'll probably feel pretty good if she's paced herself correctly at 25 laps, but she'll still have 24, 25 minutes of running to go. Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like to describe it as kind of like a slow burn, right? Um, I mean, Alice is gearing up for the longest um, distance that we have to offer on the roads, and that's 26.2. And, you know, this is a great stepping stone for her to kind of simulate what that is going to feel like. I mean, when you talk about um, a goal pace for her for her debut marathon, she's probably looking around that 542, 540 uh, per mile uh, range here. Uh, which will give her about that 229, 230 uh, through a marathon. So this is a great stimulus for her heading into her debut marathon December 5th. The one-hour run is most similar to the half marathon just because it is the same in, in duration close to. Uh, Alice's personal best in that event was run at the Rock and Roll San Diego half marathon in 2019 where she placed third in 111.38. So today, with what she's pacing at, she's pacing almost a minute slower for that four uh, half marathon pace, but she doesn't have to run an hour and 12 minutes, or hour and 11 minutes here tonight. She only has to run an hour, so this should be very comfortable. And she, like, like we mentioned earlier, she went out about 10 seconds slower than that for the first mile, but since then has been clipping along 534s to 536s and looks very comfortable doing so as Lauren Paquette leads her through her 19th lap. And joining us in the booth, we have Coach Ben Rosario, who has been on the field for the last 27 minutes or so here. Um, we just want to hand it over to you, Ben. How, uh, how's Alice looking? Yeah, I'm very pleased so far. It started out a little bit weird. I, well, I had told Danny, you know, if, if anything, err on the side of caution the first couple of laps. And I think it was so slow that it kind of bothered Alice. And then she ran that 81. But then since then, I think they've been 83, 84 straight through the whole time. So that's great. As a coach, you know your athletes better than even we do up in this booth. What are you seeing from Alice right now? Alice looks relaxed to me. Al Alice is kind of a, you know, a bit of an antsy runner, so she doesn't sometimes look as relaxed as maybe others do. But this is relaxed Al <laughs> Alice, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, no, she, she looks very good. She likes to be on the inside. She asked those ladies to run on her outside when they were pacing her. So if you are watching and it seems a little weird that she's not tucked in behind the pacer that was her request and what key session maybe in this block indicated this pace that you decided for Alice to try to run here tonight well really we waited as long as we could she did a couple of sessions on the track in Europe when she was visiting family because we wanted to get used to running all these laps that was something we learned from you guys when you guys tried it um, but then last week in or I guess it was yeah last week about 10 days ago, she ran four by two miles on the track in Flagstaff at 7,000 feet, averaging about 535 per mile. So we felt like, okay, if you come down here to 1,000 feet or so and run that same pace straight through, that seems pretty doable to me. That was one of the things that told me. Also, I just know you know, the type of athlete she, she is. And as you say, this is actually a little slower than her best half marathon pace, which isn't surprising considering that uh, this is pretty hot down here. I don't know if you guys have mentioned that, but it's about 79 degrees right now. There she is taking some water. So we were trying to be conservative. That was, you know, I wanted it to be fun and I wanted her to run as fast as she could, but I, I, I don't, you know, I don't want her to go over the edge. I want her to be uh, good at the end. Yeah, and she just had her fifth mile split while Coach Ben Rosario was talking us through that, and she ran a 5.37, so right on that 84-second pace still. And she's got the company of Lauren Paquette here for another mile, and that'll be really helpful for this last mile. She should probably savor that while she has it for another five, five minutes and 30 seconds or so, and then she'll be solo for the last, I don't know, 20, 24, 23, no, 25 minutes. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, right? You know, uh, I, I think if you're watching this, 
you know, and you've never done such a long effort on the track. There's you, you guys have probably talked about it. Maybe I'll throw a question at you. It's just it's harder than you would think. Nick, am I right about that? Yeah, absolutely. We spoke about that earlier, and it's it's something that I can't necessarily put uh, you know put my finger on. Like I don't know why it's that hard, and it, it's something about the monotonous. Uh, nature of turning left and <laughs> staying on the track for so long you know it's not it's not the rolling hills of, uh, of Lake Mary Road that we're used to training on all the time and there is something uh, to be said about being calloused to uh, the mental the mental aspect of running this many laps she is inside 20 laps to go till she passes that UK record mark she just passed the cone after doing 21 laps and like we said earlier in the broadcast it's about 41 laps and a turn so she just passed that she has less than 20 laps till she's right on there we're coming up on five and a half miles here at the next split so I'm gonna let you guys go here in a second I know I've got a couple more guests to send your way we're gonna get Danny Shanahan up here after she's done doing the rest of her workout out there on the back stretch uh, hopefully we'll get um, Jennifer Higgins up here to talk some sports science, uh, and we're just going to have a little fun with this broadcast. Appreciate you guys doing this. Thanks for letting us. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Ben. Thanks for that insight, and uh, go Alice. You might be wondering at this point why Ben chose myself and Nick to do this broadcast. Well, if you don't know, we do a podcast ourselves, so we're a little used to talking to each other for an hour or so. If you haven't ever listened to Running Rivals, that is our podcast. We're going to plug that right now. Uh, go ahead and take a listen. It's on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. We love it. We have a lot of fun with it, and uh, we think you'd enjoy it too if you're a running nerd like us. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, this has been a fun way to kind of, you know, flex our uh, our skills. You know, kind of chatting a couple of guys just uh, chatting up in the booth, talking running. Uh, it's something that we like to do in our free time. So check out the podcast. We'd appreciate it. All right, she's. Going to get pretty close here to the 10K mark, which we'll, we'll know how she's paced these last two 5Ks really shortly as she comes up on the 23-lap mark here. That'll be two laps outside of 10 kilometers, which, like I said, that's the furthest she's ever gone on the track before. Then it's all unknown, uncharted territory after that. It's kind of like the first time you maybe ran a marathon after running half. Every mile after 13 on the race course is brand new, and, and she's going to be experiencing that for at least we hope 16 laps and change so she can get that record yeah absolutely that's that's such a good point here rory um there's you know there's that unknown where um you just don't know how that's gonna go uh but i think with positive minds good fitness uh approaching it with curiosity is is a piece of the puzzle here and if we know anything about alice she's she's great at this stuff so this is gonna be this is gonna be fun for her to figure out you know just how far she can get yeah, we have no doubt in Alice's ability to push herself. But I will say, I doubt she's keeping it positive. We know Alice. She's British. She loves to keep her sense of humor pretty dry. She likes to be a little bit of a pessimist, glass half empty. But that's what motivates her. She's probably telling herself every lap out there that she can give a little bit more. And she's probably keeping herself as accountable as anybody would out here and, and really putting the pressure on herself. She lives for this moment. And it's been a while since she's had a, uh, an opportunity to show off what she's made of. And I'm sure she's loving this as she's looks really really strong at the 33 minute mark here on the track like like we've mentioned before she's ran a race recently the athens half marathon but before that it had been so long since she had raced and this is really the biggest stage she's been on since before the pandemic yeah that's such a good point rory and uh this is really her kind of coming out party here um after such a long time uh being being on the injury reserve side uh, we're approaching the Six miles. the sixth mile here. Twenty four laps. One more till she hits the ten k mark. A little hand split on that puts us about five thirty seven or so. So another five thirty seven. This is great. This is great running here by Alice Wright. Yeah. Again, they're they're totally locked in. But this is really such a great um, a great event for for Alice. I when I first joined the team back in 2019, I ran into an injury myself, and we put a lot of time in the pool together, just aqua jogging, uh, doing swimming laps, that sort of thing. Um, you know, got to know Alice pretty well, just her and I jogging in the water. But um, nonetheless, you know, after those injuries, it's it really there's something really motivating about finally being in a great spot where you're really fit, uh, you're really healthy, and you're just chipping away, seeing how good you can be. So we're really pumped for Alice to be able to do this. 
And Alice is officially all alone here as she's approaching the 10K mark as she comes down the home stretch here. 25 laps in the bag almost. Coach Ben Rosario is giving her some words of encouragement on that back stretch, running, getting excited. I think this is shaping up to be quite the run so far. She hasn't had a, a lap that looked off at all. She still has great cadence, great form. She looks focused as ever. And we're just happy to be here, and we're happy that we had the opportunity to use this beautiful facility of Brophy High School. Thanks again to them for letting us use this facility. Uh, this is the same high school that uh, teammate Steph Rothstein went to, although it's a, uh, a split boy-girl school. She went to Xavier Preparatory. That's the 10K mark at what did we have? I have about 35.08.09, right around there. Which means she was 17.34 for both. 1734, 1735 for both 5Ks. She's Alice on. is locked in. She's on. But yeah, big shout out to Brophy High School. Um, back in the day, it was Steph Rothstein. You know her as Steph Bruce. Uh, we're excited to be kind of in her stomping grounds here. Um, you know, you. I'm sure everyone listening here uh, knows of Steph Bruce quite well. Uh, great, great teammates, and uh, it's just fun to be down here in Phoenix, where she started off what is a great running career so far yeah and if you are following this broadcast because you're a fan of NAZ Elite and don't know how to follow Alice Wright as you're becoming a huge Alice Wright fan I'm sure right now you can follow Alice Wright on Twitter at Alice Wright 01 or on Instagram at Alice Wright 139 not sure what those numbers mean but you should give her a follow <laughs> <laughs> Give her a follow. You'll see a lot of Sedona pictures, which isn't a bad thing. If you're not from Arizona, um, I know we have two uh, Ireland uh, listeners on the broadcast right now. It's it's quite early in the AM, so we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, it's probably about 2.30 or so in the morning over there. Um, but give Alice a follow. You'll see some great photos of uh, some great Arizona nature. Last split was... A 85, it looks like. I can't quite see the split on here. 84.75? Yeah, so she's still right on, right on. That's 540 pace if she's running eight, 85s, which is, again, 10 seconds under per mile. She's banked herself quite a bit of time here so far. Let me do the math. Um, yeah. She's probably a minute and 30 seconds ahead of if we had a, a light on the track set on that British record. She'd be about a a minute and 30 seconds ahead of it right now. So she's doing very well for herself when it when it comes to pacing ahead of that record at this point. And we're getting well past halfway at 37 minutes. We're almost to that, that uh, daunting 40-minute mark. <laughs> that daunting 40-minute mark. Yeah, the biggest piece of the puzzle right now is, you know, she has to, to stay calm and trust the fact that she's dialed into a certain pace here. Um, just let those... Let those laps click off. Um, and if you see a split that you don't necessarily like that may be a little bit off, just not panicking. Just enjoying the fact that you're out here, you're fit, you're healthy, and uh, you're in a good spot, and knowing that you have a lot more to bring home that last 10 minutes. So she's in a great spot here. And if you can hear on the broadcast, we do have a little bit of an atmosphere here. We got the Brophy High School boys team that is out here cheering for Alice. We got the Xavier High School girls team. And we got track super fan Derek Rubis on the track cheering in a New Mexico jersey. Shout out to Derek Rubis, one of the biggest fans of the sport. He's here to support Alice right here tonight, as are many, and as are many from afar. And jumping in the booth here, we have Danny Shanahan. She just finished up her pacing duties not too long ago. Had a little bit of a workout afterwards. Um, just real quick here, Danny, how was that out there? How did that feel for you, and how do you feel that Alice is doing? Um, it was a lot of fun. There's great energy out on the track, and you know, Alice, she's definitely an athlete that has a mind of her own, so I felt like a little bit of a supporting cast there, but she's really good at knowing the kind of effort that she's ready for on the day and just really feeling that out, and you can definitely see her doing that now even though we've both stepped off. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of let her run the ship and helped her out as much as I can. Yeah, it looked like that first mile was just like touch on the slow side. You know, Ben had mentioned that, you know, go out a little bit conservative, get into that rhythm. Um, how did that kind of play out? Were you guys talking out there, uh, you, Lauren, and, um, and Alice? Well, see, Lauren and I did a 200 before it started to try to, like, get the feel of the pace. 
Um, and B- I, Ben asked me what it was, and I was like, oh, 81. He's like, way too fast. Don't you dare. So I Perfect. think I overcompensated just a little bit, and then we kind of had to find the right rhythm. But once we did, we were just super locked in, and we were able to click them off. So it looks like Alice came through at about a 5.40, so just a couple seconds off what she's been clicking off uh, recently out there. And, you know, that's to be expected. You know, she did, she's all alone out there at this point. She's still well under this U.K. record at the moment. Um, and, Danny, before you go, um, you know, just what was that experience like? What's it like uh, helping out a teammate get to what's inevitably going to be a great U.K. record? You know, it's – it's what we're all about, right? Like we all want to lift each other up and help each other exceed um, and do great things in the sport. And wa- helping a teammate break their country's record is really special and something I'll definitely always remember. And I think we're going to have um, some fun and celebrate tonight um, if when she does it. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Thank you so much, Danny, and good luck to you next week in that 5K. Thanks. I'm going to go slog around the middle of this. Perfect. And Cheer on Alice for us, all right? <laughs> We've got a great crowd of listeners online. Uh, We see in the comments that we've got someone from Barbados listening. Thanks for cheering from Barbados. And we have some fellow Brits cheering from Tennessee. Love to see that. Keep supporting. Send those positive vibes. She's going to need every positive vibe you can send her as she is now in the 40-minute range of this race, and things just got real. Yes, things got real. Uh, You know, in some of these longer efforts, some of these longer sessions usually – um, I have felt this, I know, Roy, you felt this too, is, is you kind of go through a rough patch, like even if it's just a workout. And you, sometimes you just kind of have to weather the battle. And for whatever reason, the body just feels like it can't necessarily get there. Um, but like we've mentioned, Alice is very fit. She's very good at running on the track. She just has to kind of weather those few laps that may feel kind of bad. And, you know, I'm willing to bet that she feels um, a lot better come that 50-minute mark when it's kind of the home stretch, you know? Yeah, if we if we get to the point where things start to get tough for Alice, she has banked a lot of time for herself, and there's still plenty of running left to go. But she still it looks like she's really charging home, and we're approaching the 30th lap of this of this race, and we still have about 18 minutes to go. 18 minutes and 20 seconds. I think she's she's in a really good position if she can just keep her form together, stay strong, focus on one lap at a time, try not to think about the big picture, the record yet, the 18 minutes that are remain on the clock. She's just got to stay with it every step of the way. Keep counting those steps, Alice. Yeah, just, you know, thinking back to Michaela McCallum's um, advice for Alice, just stay in the moment, stay as present as you can. Don't think about how much time there is left. That's just going to help you uh, take care of this record here. Um, And if you're just joining us, this is the Hoka... Uh, one hour run down in Phoenix. Alice is well on her way to a UK record. Uh, big thanks to Hoka for providing giveaways tonight for the fans that are here in attendance. We have Sid Vaughn down there giving out, giving out some hats, some uh, Hoka swag. Uh, so we're really appreciative of our great sponsor, Hoka. And we also are thankful again for using the Brophy High School track facility. And we're also thankful for Coros for being Alice's personal uh, sports perfor- sports performance sponsor for this event. Um, she's been with Coros for a while, and I know she loves her Apex. Uh, if you haven't heard of Coros, they're a GPS watch company, and they have a great product. Check it out. Just want to give a big shout out to our uh, Colombian listener. Um, we've got listeners from all over. This is uh, this is incredible. Um, we're super excited just to have uh, such a widespread audience that's tuning in to see Alice take down this UK record. And we're about to have Dr. Jennifer Higgins, sports scientist, join the booth as she's going to talk a little bit about what's going on with Alice and her body at this point in a one-hour record attempt. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Jennifer Higgins. Thank you very much, Rory. It's great to be here. Uh, what's what's going on right now in Alice's body as she's tr- really reaching this three quarters of the way through the race point? Yeah, so Alice is running around uh, lactate threshold, so it's sustainable, but it's it, like she is accumulating more lactate than she's clearing. Um, so right, so probably around now she is starting to feel it. And I think one of the skills that Alice really has is her ability to lock in on a pace. Um, you know, she's running 83s, 84s, um, pretty much consistently. Um, And that's really, really beneficial, something here, rather than like dealing with um, accelerations and decelerations. Um, So we're, and and trying to 
keep just within that uh, that zone that we're aiming for. So that's uh, you know I think she's perfect for this event. <laughs> when you see a split pop up like a 540 after running a couple 536, 537s. Do you think, what do you think is happening that's causing that slow? Do you think it's a mental lapse? Do you think there's something physical happening at this point in the race? So certainly, like, the effort is going to definitely start to feel um, a bit harder at this point. Um, I do think also there's a couple of things that have happened here. So Al started with pacers, and she's now had to take over that pacing job herself. Um, so that is also going to have an impact. But we have a, a really great night here. Um, you know, for someone who lives at 7,000 feet, we're pretty much at sea level, so we're at about 1,000 feet here, 300 meters for our European listeners, and uh, a great uh, evening, about 77, about 23 uh, Celsius, and really low humidity, and also, even though typically it's really hot down here and people will feel it, because we don't have any sun, we're also not dealing with the, the solar impact, so that's, all of those factors are contributing to Alice, and I think we're, um, Eight miles in, we just hit the eight mile mark. She has, as she passes, you see that big cone she's passing right now? She has nine laps to go till she breaks the record. And she has a little over 14 minutes and 30 seconds to do that. She's in a great spot. She's banked herself a lot of times. She still looks really strong. That last lap was actually another 84. So she's still clipping along the same pace. Like she said, it's just getting a little harder mentally. This is just a point in the race where she's going to have to really grit her teeth, focus, and keep, keep pressing until she reaches that that point where she can smell the finish line and then maybe kick it into another gear. Yeah, and I think at um, this point here, even though uh, you know she is gritting her teeth a little bit and probably having to go through, and even though she has got a bit of time banked for Alice, when we look at her, her 10K times, her half marathon times, and what she's been doing in training, we're pretty confident that this is still well within Alice's capability. So um, things are hopefully looking good. So hopefully nine more laps and... We'll, uh, we'll know where we are. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thanks so much for joining us, uh, Jennifer Higgins. Uh, you've been a great help for our team as a sports scientist, and it's nice to hear your perspective on this event. Great. Thanks, Rory. And, uh, yeah, hopefully in a couple more, about 20 minutes, we'll, we'll have the result. <laughs> yes. What was that last mile for us, Nick? You had the split. Yeah, I had her clocked at around 538. So it looks like she's uh, picked it up after that 540 we saw after the last Pacer Lauren Paquette came off there and I mean I I just I think her her stride looks just as smooth it's it's opened up just a touch and you know as as much as she might be gritting her teeth a little bit at this point um she's well within a rhythm here that she's going to be able to sustain and what's going to be fun here is you know as we approach that 50 minute mark and as she's really sniffing that finish line or you know that finish time I should say um she uh she may even kick it up a notch she may realize that she has a little bit more within her to uh to push things down a bit yeah, she's doing great. She, I mean, honestly, to me, it looks like she's moving faster. I don't know if it's because it's getting darker out here or something or if it's just the intensity of the moment. But to me, she looks like she's getting faster and stronger throughout these laps. She keeps clipping 84s off. She has only had a handful of laps that have gone just over that 84-point mark. She's been right on since since about the third lap of this race. And she's, she's looking really, really strong here as we approach the 48-minute mark. And we come up on the 34th lap of this race. Yes, 34 laps down. She's, I mean, this is this is great running here, and it's been really fun to see this because this is how you're supposed to run the one-hour run right here, right, Nick? This is this is how it's supposed to get. It's supposed to get harder, but you're supposed to be able to just keep pushing and keep staying on that red line. Yes, absolutely. And you know, some uh, fun thing that I was um, attacking when I was, you know, venturing into this event myself was trying to get that American record for the 10 mile, which I inevitably. I did get um, around the 48 minute mark. Uh, let me tell you though, once I got to that point, I kind of took off the gas for about two laps and then after that just saw what I could do uh, to bring it in for the last eight minutes or so. Um, but much different f from what I was doing uh, that day last year. Alice is on full charge. Um, she is you know, just approaching this record at such a quick pace here. This is super fun. Um, the energy is increasing here. I'm I'm getting excited. The crowd is getting more excited as we bring her home. Yeah, currently with with how much time she's put ahead of that previous record, she would be a, over a lap ahead of of the previous record holder. So you have to think with how she looks right now with 11 minutes left that she's got this. She's just got to just see how far under she can go and this is a great building block for Alice looking forward 
to the Valencia Marathon where she will make her marathon debut. And this mental challenge will mean way more than the physical stimulus that she's getting out of this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just something to think about is when she does approach that marathon, she will nev inevitably have um, a pack of runners around here. Um, you know, just as she had some pacers today with Danny and Lauren, uh, you just imagine 10 more gals running the same pace as her. It's going to feel a heck of a lot easier. And you don't have to turn left the whole time. <laughs> you get some crowd noise in there. You get some great streets. Uh, this is uh, It's going to be such a great event for her. She's such a strong, smooth runner. This is just awesome. Yeah, she's done 35 laps. So as she passed that cone again, that was six laps till she needs that all she needs that until she has broken that previous record. She looks really good as she gets fluids here again. And yeah. it looks like the last split was an 85. So again, like we're talking decimals, she's slowed if anything, which is fine at this point in the race. She might even get another gear as she approaches the five minutes to go. That's what I would anticipate is as she knows she's nearing the end. She'll have a little bit more drive to kind of lower that record as much as she can, but maybe she doesn't want to lower it too much. Maybe she wants to leave that just close enough to get one more time. Maybe next time she comes out. Yeah, maybe next time around she decides, oh, let's uh, let's beat old Alice here. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are within 10 minutes to go here, nine and a half or s and change, and we are approaching the, the ninth nine mile. mile. Going to get a split here for you guys momentarily. About a 540. We have about a 540 there. So just another 540 on the, on the docket. Um, That's 85 second laps around the track, which is well under pace. She has, she hasn't lost time on that record no. since the first lap. She's consistently put herself ahead of the record pace. Yes, she's well under, um, and I mean we're creeping towards it here. Five uh, laps to go. Five laps to go. That's all she needs to break that record. And that's got to feel good. She gets that big cone, and from there on, it's her record. Anything she gets, it's her own. Um, man, that, I mean, this is just this is getting exciting, guys. When you watch this race wind down, one thing to get excited to watch for is how much goes into finding exactly how far she runs. You'll remember if you watched our previous one-hour record attempt, the official actually has to run behind the athlete so that exactly at the hour when they hear that gun, they mark where they stopped on the track. Yeah, it was uh, a fun thing on, on the social media was that <laughs> got a lot of attention when we did this hour was the, um, the official, the USA, or uh, it was USAT official for me, but uh, the official that was chasing me down as I was ticking down the, the, you know, the last 10 seconds of the race. Um, people loved it. They got a real kick out of it, and we're going to have some fun with that here in eight minutes. Oh, my goodness. We are getting really close to just a mile outside of that, and she has – seven minutes and 45 seconds to run that mile she could stop and have a glass of water here and probably still break this record and she's just well under pace this is i mean i don't want to count my chickens before they hatch but i think we're gonna do it i, think, I believe i think we're gonna do it Roy. we're well on our we way we are there. gonna do this nick we are gonna be a part of this here yep alice it's all alice out there right now and a couple of fan supporters as well at uh brophy high school we're super pumped uh, to have this facility. I mean, under the lights, uh, high school athletes here uh, cheering her on. It doesn't get much better than this. And again, if you're tuning in late to this, this is the Hoka NAZ Elite one-hour run at Brophy High School. Thanks so much to Brophy High School for letting us use their facility. Thanks so much for Koros and Hoka for being a part of this. And this is a good environment. It's starting, the music, you know, is it's getting intense. Alice is closing in on that record. She still looks really strong. And we have about six minutes and 45 seconds to go. And this is fun. This is fun. This is Rory Linkletter and Nick Hogger on the mic. Again, we want to plug our podcast one more time. <laughs> Before we get too close to this record, Running Rivals, please listen if you haven't yet. You can find us on all podcast platforms. That's Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If, if you listen to some other podcast platform that I'm not aware of, I'm sure we're on there too. We use... <laughs> We use a, a platform that broadcasts that to all things. You know, we uh, we love talking running uh, outside of fun events like this. Uh, so if you are a fan of the sport, hop on, take a listen to some great um, guests that we've had, Olympians, coaches, the whole gambit. It's a good time. Three laps more is all Alice needs as she passes that cone again. And, again, we're going to plug Alice right here. We, I mean – 
you're watching her really put everything out there as Ben Rosario gives her some encouragement on the back stretch. You got to follow Alice Wright. She's she's a good follow. We're going to see Sedona pictures. You're going to see <laughs> awesome performances on the track and the road. And she's just a good time. She's she's a good bloke, as the Brits might say. Uh, <laughs> that's Alice Wright zero one on Twitter and Alice Wright one three nine on Instagram. Give her a follow. Also, if you don't follow our team, I don't know what you're doing here, but follow <laughs> at Hoka NAZ Elite, please. All right, we're approaching the special five-minute mark. Five minutes doesn't seem like a lot of time, but when you are, have been running on the track for 55 minutes already, turning left, th over 30 laps in, attempting a UK record, it sure feels like a lot of time. Let's we go, a, Alice. 39 laps audience. down right here. 39 laps. You got a little over two to go. A little over two to go. I mean, Rory, if you were approaching this uh, this record yourself, like, what would be going through your head? Uh, it's not every day that you get to, you know, attempt a record like this. How do you think Alice is kind of feeling here? Well, I mean, I know Alice, and uh, this is this is a good opportunity to uh, do it for the gram and enjoy this moment. You're you're gonna get it. Look look good, feel good, enjoy this moment, bask in this moment. You've been working really hard. You've gone through months and months of cross training and wondering if you're going to be healthy again. And here you are, healthy, on the track, running for now 56 minutes almost, and you're crushing. You're crushing this run, and you have not let off an inch here. And this is a celebration of hard work and fitness and, and a real opportunity here for you to show the world that Alice Wright isn't done with this and that you're going to make a statement here in Valencia on December 5th. So yeah, I just want to mention for our listeners that uh, as this is a Hoka event and Alice is a Hoka athlete, she's wearing the Hoka Tracer. It is, um, as she is attempting this record in order to stay eligible, there's certain stack height rules around the shoes that we have these days. And this is a record eligible shoe, uh, Hoka shoe that she is racing in as we speak. So super excited. Big shout out to Hoka for sponsoring such a great event, giving out some Hoka swag to people. And we just got our 10th mile split at 540. She's locked in, folks. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have just over a lap to go till she's officially a UK British record holder. This is huge for the one hour run. Again, a, a historic event in all endurance sports that has just gotten its its glitz and glam in uh, track and field a bit over the last year. She's going to actually be pretty close here to the American record in this event. Just for reference for those U.S. running fans, Molly Huddle holds it that she set in 2020, and it's about 43 laps, and she's going to be really close to that mark here as she has three minutes to go, and she's done 40 and a half laps. She needs two and a half laps to get close to Molly Huddle's mark. Yep, and it, yep, she is. As we uh, look down at Ben Rosario here, this is uh, this is the big lap here. She is approaching that cone that signifies the old UK mark. She still has two and a half minutes to go. Let's bring Alice in here, guys. We're yeah. we're excited. Enjoy this, is, this moment. She's got less than two hundred meters till she is a national record holder, which is by no means an easy task. If it was easy, everyone would do it. And they just can't. This is something that takes serious talent, serious guts, and performance on the day. So she is crossing the start again. and 41 laps down. Just a turn to go, and this, this record is hers. The last two-ish minutes here is all her running. It's been 21 years and changed since this record was set. This is a long-standing record, folks. And here it is. Here Alice it is, Wright. Guys. She breaks a national record. Wow. Any All this from is here gravy, is baby. Hers. <laughs> the yeah, this is the fun part. You know, this is what uh, this is what she came for after you know so much pacing, so much work from her teammates, uh, that sort of thing. After the injuries, uh, she just needs to bask in this moment here. It's not every day that you uh, you get this moment. Job well done, Alice. Now keep on the gas for 90 more seconds. Let's see how far you can go. She's definitely going to get to 10 and a half miles. How close can she get to that Molly Huddle record is is something that I would think if if Alice is aware of that record, she knows Molly Huddle is an athlete of incredible stature, yes. and this would be really impressive to see how close she gets to that. She would need to run pretty fast here this last minute, but you know what? She's already 
a record holder. She's got one minute to go. One minute to go, guys. This is the exciting piece. Watch for those officials. They're watching her. We're going to get well into the ba the home stretch or the uh, back stretch of this track here for her. She's covered 10 and a half miles now, and now it's just how far can she go in this last 45 seconds. She's got to pump her arms. She's got to drive her knees. She's probably exhausted, but she's going to have a nice celebratory meal after this, I'm sure. Well earned, Alice Wright. 30 seconds on the clock, everyone. On the back stretch of this track. She beat it by over 400 meters. It's probably going to be pretty close to 600 meters by the time we're all said and done. See Ben Rosario running across the field, looking to place that cone wherever she, she stops with 15 seconds to go here. We're excited for Alice. The crowd is excited for Alice. Put your hands together, folks, from your home or here in live. We're about to get a national record. Five. Where's it going to be? Three, two, one. There it is. And she made it, I would say, about 550 meters past that previous record, but that's just me eyeballing it. One, in, Yeah, I mean, oh. We knew that she was going to be well under this pace from the gun, but you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, this is, again, this is an hour on the track. This is a long time to be turning left. Um, I mean, we saw it there. You know, things inevitably were coming off the pace a little bit, and you, you just have to grit your teeth and keep going, knowing that record is going to be yours when you pass. You might not be able to see her on the camera because she's in the dark part of the track, but her teammates are embracing her. This is a great moment of celebration. Again, long road to get here. Injuries, pandemic, all things considered. Alice Wright is just trying to build some momentum back into this sport, and she's done it well tonight as she gears her focus towards the Valencia Marathon. We're going to get a word from Alice here shortly as she runs around the track here with the UK flag. Proud to be your newest UK one-hour run national record holder. What an incredible night, guys. Thank you for so much for tuning in. Um, if you guys hang around, we're going to go radio dark for just a moment as we get set up to interview Alice in a few minutes here. We're going to let her uh, catch her breath, get some water, that sort of thing, and uh, we'll have a great interview with Alice live for you guys Again, here momentarily. Again, stick around for that. Stick around for that. You're going to want to hear what the new national record has to say. Let's give her a round of applause. Wow, what a run. This is huge. This is a, this is a moment of triumph.
All right, guys, we are back with newly minted UK one hour record holder, Alice Wright. We're going to take it over to you, Alice. Uh, just take us through it. How was that out there? Um, it was tough, actually, tougher than expected. Um, I feel like we started off a little slow and then we kind of got a bit too fast and then it kind of settled into more of a steady rhythm after that but um yeah i would have liked to have been a, like the greedy side of me would have liked to have been a little quicker or for at least it to have felt better but um yeah coming off a tough week of training i feel like it was it was a good effort it was the best i probably could have done that day <laughs> yeah uh you're you're coming off a tough week of training you're training through this event you're getting ready for a marathon on december 5th what did this run for you tell you about yourself tonight and how does it fair for for future efforts going forward um so i think on when was it wednesday or tuesday we did 10 by k and i was a little nervous to do that one for how i'd feel today um but i felt like all in all like it was a really solid week of training and i feel like this is a good indicator of where my fitness is at ahead of um a marathon in december hopefully now alice you've had you you've been riddled with injuries for the past it seems like year and a half, two years or so. Um, what does this mean to finally be healthy, fit, uh, and to, to take a UK record to your name? Um, yeah, I'm delighted, honestly, just to be out there running. I can't complain about faster splits and whatnot because, honestly, just coming out and being healthy today was definitely the main thing. And <clears throat> to finally be more worried about fitness rather than something hurting um, is just a big relief. So, yeah, delighted. We're pumped for you, Alice. Congratulations. You should uh, celebrate well tonight. And congratulations again on being a national record holder. Uh, what do you have to say to everyone who tuned in? Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate everyone watching for an hour on the track. It, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a great night.